We have a new order of worship today. So. We have a new order of worship today, and um, I'm the one who, who told them all how it was going to change, and then I forgot. <laughs> I'm back there chatting, and so, <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Isn't it a beautiful day to be in God's house? Amen? Oh, I, I think the late nights of Holy Walk have caught up with me this morning. How about you guys? <laughs> It was a fabulous event over the last couple of days, so I am so grateful for everyone who played a part in making it happen. It was my first experience, and it was fantastic. Um, I think over the course of the two days, we, I'm pretty sure, had well over 2,000 people coming through with, yeah, we lost count. It was packed in here. There was all kinds of uh, music and entertainment, and and wonderful, wonderful things happening in the village and at the manger. So it was a, a very successful event. So thank you for being part of that. Just a, a few additional announcements I want to call to your attention. The first one is very, very special for this service, and it has to do with next week. Next week, we won't be here at this time. <laughs> So, next week is our Christmas cantata, uh, so I really encourage everybody to choose to come to either our 8.15 or 11 o'clock services next week um, to partake with the, the band and our singers and the orchestra and the choir putting on a wonderful holiday um, Christmas Advent uh, cantata for us. Um, we will be back here at the same time in two weeks for our third Sunday of Advent, so I hope to see you all back then. Um, speaking of the upcoming Sundays in Advent, including Christmas Eve, can you believe that's only about three weeks away? Yeah. <laughs> um, 
for both our candle lighting, uh, Advent candle lighting each Sunday, and for our Christmas Eve services. We would love to have some of you involved in the readings and participation of those services. There are sign-ups online right now. Um, For Sunday morning, Christmas Eve is on Sunday this year. For Sunday morning, we will be having one combined service here in the sanctuary at 1030. So we're mixing it up every other week, see? I'm I'm ready to confuse everyone this year. (laughs) Uh, and then we will have our regular uh, 5, 7, 9, and 11 services on Christmas Eve evening. So we have uh, many readings over those services and many opportunities to take part. So I would encourage you all to take a look at the website and sign up for those that are calling to you. In the blue section of the bulletin today, we have lots of missional opportunities happening this time of year as well. So I'd say take a look at those and see what may be speaking to you in a missional capacity this year. I'm also very excited to introduce to everyone today a new version of our Breakthrough Prayer that has been especially written for the Advent Christmas season going into the new year. And I think it's a a pretty powerful one. So I would encourage everybody to, uh, we'll pray it here together in just a moment, but to set those alarms on your clocks again, on your watches, on your phones for 8 p.m. each night, uh, and take just a minute to collectively pray our breakthrough prayer together each evening. Uh, We have seen some mighty powerful breakthroughs happening here in the congregation and in our community. Um, We do have the little cards like we have had in the past, so if you didn't get those on the way in, we have those at the back of the sanctuary. Um, Take a picture of it with your cell phone, slip it into your purse, just have that with you for that moment of encouragement each evening. So with that, I am going to invite you all to stand with me as you're led and able And let's pray our new breakthrough prayer. And then I I will continue (laughs) making sure I try to get the new order right. (laughs) Let's pray. God of new beginnings, as we rest in your presence, prepare room in our hearts for your holy breath. May your spirit inspire our next steps in following your will. Amen. Thank you. Y'all may be seated. We're going to turn to our our Advent candle lighting at this time. And each year, as we light the Advent candles to remember the, the symbolism of the four Sundays of Advent, I'd like to invite the Smith family to come forward, and they're going to help us with this special ritual for the first Sunday of Advent. Now, for most of us, Advent can be filled with worry about finding the perfect Christmas gifts. Now, isn't it true that that deep down inside, we want the people in our lives to know that they are special and that we love them? But sometimes, sometimes we overlook the greatest gift of all that we have to give, and that is our very presence. The 19th century poet Christina Rossetti wrote in the bleak midwinter that became a popular Christmas carol. Modern composer Mark Hayes set the last verse of that poem to music, and that's going to be part of a theme song that we'll have throughout our Advent series. It reminds us that even if we are feeling poor, whether that's in resources, in body, or in spirit, we can simply be a gift of presence. We can give our hearts.
Wrap a present on this first Sunday of Advent with great anticipation for the gift that God will reveal. We open our hearts as we open the gift. The promise of hope is the divine gift we receive. And what will we and what will we do with it? The gift of hope is an essential survival tool because it reminds us that the hard times do not have the last word. Hope is not simply a wish. Hope calls us into action based on a belief that things can be different. We can work to bring about the better world that we hope for. We light this candle of hope as a sign that we will be present with hope in the world. Let us pray. Holy living light of God, you are our hopeful presence. Let this hope grow in our lives each day so we can be a present of hope to others. Unwrap and open our hearts. May it be so. Amen. You did a great job. I'm just going to get it out of your way. Since we are in the season of Advent, and we have many, many carols that we love to sing, we're going to intersperse some of those into our worship here in the current over the next few weeks. So I want to invite you all to stand as you are able and join us in our opening song this morning, Hark the Herald and King of Heaven Come. Bye. 
thy highest heaven adored, Christ the everlasting Lord. Make in time, behold him come, offspring of the virgin's womb. Finally lays his glory by, for that we no more may Born to give them second birth, our fair old angels sing, glory to the newborn King, the newborn King, King of heaven come down, King of heaven come down, let your glory reign shining like the day. strong to save in your mighty name, King of heaven come, King of heaven come, King of heaven come, King of heaven come. That's a woohoo! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all. Well, I'd like to invite you all to take this moment to greet your neighbors, maybe make some new friends on the other side of the sanctuary, and pass the peace of Christ this morning. Throughout our Advent series, we'll be sharing a, a little more in the way of the, the scriptures than we normally do here at The Current. As many of you know, we typically, within the United Methodist Church, I say typically because I don't usually follow this path, um, use something called the Revised Common Lectionary. And today, in church speak, is the start of a new year. Um, Advent begins a, a new year of celebration as we eagerly anticipate the birth of our Savior. And so for this series, we're going to pepper in some of those other scriptures that we don't typically read here in the current. And that is because there is so much in the way of, of history and prophecy that leads us to the birth of our Savior. And so much rejoicing that is recorded in the pages of the Bible, it seems very fitting to proclaim the good news of Christ's presence among us through all of these passages this season. The, the book of Psalms was the songbook of the Hebrew people. And Psalm 80 was written in a time when the people were exiled from their homeland. In it, we hear the conviction and the hope that God will restore the people. We hear these words. Shepherd of Israel, hear us. You who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned on the cherubim, shine out. Shine out before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Awaken your power and come to save us. O oh God, return to us. 
Let your face smile on us, and we will be saved. Now, another community at a later time, the early Christians, also lived in a time of oppression by the Roman occupiers. The letters that circulated among them gave them hope for the future. So hear this excerpt this morning from the first letter to the Corinthians. I continually thank my God for you because of the gift you bestowed on you, because of the gift bestowed on you in Christ Jesus in whom you have been richly endowed with every gift of speech and knowledge. In the same way, the testimony about Christ has been so confirmed among you that you lack no spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our second song this morning, you can stay seated, is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. Please join us. gospel reading that we have in this year's Advent cycle is from the book of Mark, and it describes life as a calamity. In the midst of it, Jesus reminds his disciples to make sure that they pay attention and don't get distracted by all of the bad news around them. Stay awake. Stay alert, he says. Watch for the signs of a new day. Our gospel reading from Mark, Mark 13, 24 to 37. But in those days, after the time of distress, the sun will be darkened, the moon will lose its brightness, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the promised one coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then the angels will be sent to gather the chosen from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. Take the fig tree as a parable. As soon as its twigs grow supple and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, know that the promised one is near, right at the door. The truth is, before this generation has passed away, all these things will have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But as for that day or hour, nobody knows it, neither the angels of heaven, 
nor the only begotten, no one but Abba, God. Be constantly on the watch. Stay awake. You do not know when the appointed time will come. It is like people traveling abroad. They leave their home and put the workers in charge, each with a certain task. And those who watch at the front gate are ordered to stay on the alert. So stay alert. You do not know when the owner of the house is coming, whether at dusk, at midnight, when the cock crows, or at early dawn. Do not let the owner come suddenly and catch you asleep. What I say to you, I say to all, stay alert. May God add wisdom to the reading, hearing, and understanding of these words today. Amen. So how exciting is it for everybody that we are in the first Sunday of Advent today? Are we all ready for it? Are we all ready for it? Like I said, the start of a new Christian calendar year, the beginning of our preparations in celebration for Jesus' birth, just 22 short days away. 22. Kind of hard to believe, isn't it? I mean, geez, where has the last year gone? Wasn't it just yesterday that we were ringing in 2023? And now, in just four short weeks, we'll be watching that big ball in Times Square count down, down, up to 2024. Now, I distinctly remember as a little girl, my mom telling me to cherish all of the time that I had growing up because time just went faster when you got older. Of course, being the budding litigator that I later became, I had to argue with her every time she said this, that every day has 24 hours, an hour is just an hour, period. It was silly to say that time could go faster or slower. Time was just time. Then, of course, as I got older... (laughs) I came to realize that she was a lot smarter than I was (laughs) and just how right she was. Now, that's not to say that an hour was ever really more or less than an hour. But as we add more and more to our days, and, and more and more days have moved from present experience into past memories, it sure does seem like time has sped up. I've found myself, and I've got to say, I think far too often, realizing that I have been so distracted by all that I have added to my plate that I've missed out on some really important moments. Now, I I know I'm not alone in my lament, am I? I? I see the heads nodding out there. Amy Oden, in the book Right Here, Right Now, that many of you are studying this Advent season describes the challenge, the the hunger, as she calls it, of our time so poignantly. We know it well, she says, the tendency in American culture to rush through daily life at a breathless pace from one thing to the next as we jump mentally ahead to the next thing while we are doing this one. We reply to emails and update our calendars while sitting in a meeting at work. We multitask our way through the day and pull into the driveway with no memory of how we got home. We are numbered by our overstimulation and continually preoccupied. We are never truly present to the moment that we are actually living. Since the the start of the pandemic, we have seen an exponential increase in the focus on the concept of mindfulness in trying to address this hunger that we have to truly live life as we are in it, in the right here and right now. That necessarily begs the question, though, doesn't it, that what do we mean by mindfulness? Mindfulness is defined as the practice of being fully present and engaged in the moment aware of your thoughts, feelings, and surroundings without judgment. 
It involves a conscious effort to focus on the present experience, cultivating a sense of calm and clarity by observing our thoughts and emotions from a distance rather than getting all caught up in them. Mindfulness, while often perceived as a modern or a new age concept, is deeply rooted in scripture and in our Christian tradition. Christian mindfulness is the practice of paying prayerful attention in the present moment to God's abundant life. Let's listen to that again. Christian mindfulness is the practice of paying prayerful attention in the present moment to God's abundant life. It's about being real and fully present to God in our lives, right here and right now. The Gospels are full of lessons from Jesus himself about being aware of being mindful. We're told to, for example, have eyes to see and ears to hear the presence of God in our world. We also see it here in in Mark's Gospel today through that theme that is central to Jesus' teaching, to be alert, to stay awake. As Odin writes, when we are preoccupied or asleep instead of mindful and awake, we are robbed of our valuables, the very moment so precious to us in the lives of our children, our friends, and our world. Now, part of the really good news for us today is that we have everything we need right here and right now to get started in practicing Christian mindfulness. All we need is our our breath, our body, and God's presence. Now, there are many, many ways to explore the practice, and it is a practice because we get better as we do it. I want to touch just briefly on the four basic steps today that Odin outlines for us in her book. Now, for those of you who want to explore it further, there are still opportunities to join one of our many small group studies. You can find information out in the tables in the gathering area, or you can reach out to our adult discipleship coordinator, Jennifer Cloud Buckner, and she can help you find a fit. If you're feeling adventurous or even just a bit hungry, for the ability to live fully in the presence. I invite you today to try these steps as we are together here, right here and right now. Step one, she says, is known as attentive breathing. You begin by breathing slowly and deeply, paying attention to the very act of breathing. Feel that rise and fall of your chest. The feeling of air as it moves in and out. Recognize, too, that the very act of breathing, each breath that you take, is a gift from God. We don't have to think about it or even choose it. It is just ours, freely ours. Now, step two moves that attention to being aware of our whole bodies. As you continue to breathe mindfully, visualize that oxygen coming in through those breaths and how it moves throughout your body. Pay attention to the sensations or feelings that are in your body, not trying to analyze them or trying to fix them, just acknowledging that they're there. As Odin explains, as as Christians, we believe that our bodies are blessed by God, who became flesh to dwell among us. That reminds us that God meets us where we are, in our bodies, right here and right now. Next, take just a moment to acknowledge that whatever arises from that mindful breathing and embodiment, It may be thoughts or feelings or or attitudes that exist in this very moment. Positive or negative, it does not matter. The point is that we acknowledge that it's there. And to hold that 
before God, remembering that wherever you are, God is right there with you. And finally, we take just a moment to discover how how things change in your being. When you acknowledge those thoughts, feelings, and, and attitudes, and God's presence among you at that moment. Again, the the goal here is not to analyze or to judge anything. Just noticing and being aware is the core of what mindfulness is all about. It's about what is, not what was or what might be. Just what is. Now, one thing that we have to understand is that coming into that present moment for many of us and and being present with God in this way can move us towards some very hard things. Hard things because life can be messy. Life can be hard. I mean, isn't it true that in the hardest of times, we can find ourselves asking, where are you, God? We, we can find ourselves being like the, the psalmist today, calling out, wake up, God. Don't, don't you see that I'm hurting? Come, fix this. Make it better. Come and save me. But coming into the present moment, being mindful of being right here and right now helps us to understand that God is already here. We don't have to wait until the hurting stops. We don't have to wait until we we clean up our lives or get our acts together or, or fix all of the problems of the world that we carry on our shoulders. Because we do, don't we? God has already shown up. God is already here with us. Emmanuel, God with us now, here, in the midst of any and all chaos and messiness. This is where the hope that is ours through Jesus Christ resides. I watched an interview with Amy Oden this week, and and I was struck by her summary of the certainty that we gain through practicing Christian mindfulness. She says this, There is no place that you can go where God is not. There is no time of the day that God is off the clock. That is even in and through the hardest of times. Even in our most challenging moments, God's presence is a constant. It's an unyielding source of of strength and comfort. And this realization nurtures a, a kind of hope that feels palpably alive, especially during the hardest of times. It's a hope that doesn't just whisper but shouts at us through our trials, reminding us that in our times of deepest despair, we are not alone because God is with us, always. In our daily lives, being present with hope can take many forms. It's in the way that we engage with our families. It's the way that we offer a listening ear and a hopeful word. It's in our community where we strive to be that embodiment of hope for those who feel lost or forgotten. Being present with hope also means recognizing that even in our waiting and in uncertainties, there is a divine purpose for our lives. Embracing each moment fully with all of its challenges and opportunities reflects a sacredness in living. It's in this conscious presence and in this hopefulness that we find the potential for for growth, for healing, 
for transformation. All of that both in ourselves and for the world around us. Amen? Amen. We're going to enter into a, a time of prayer and meditation. As is our custom here, we'll begin with a, a time of, of silence for you all and lifting your, your prayers and your concerns and your joys to God and, and listening to for God's response to you while we listen to some very special music from our praise band today. And then when we conclude, I will lead us all in a, a pastoral prayer, um, a prayer for others and for ourselves as we move on into the sacrament of Holy Communion. And I encourage you all, again, to, to listen for how God is speaking to you today. How is it that you are being called to respond in the right here and right now? Savior is born, Jesus Messiah has come. What happened that night will ring on forever till every song has been sung. Your praise goes on, never ending. Your praise goes on. How sweet is that sound? In 2,000 years we're still singing your song, hallelujah, your praise goes on. The shepherds stood watch, and three wise men worshipped, the babe who assembled the earth. Oh, what happened that night away in a manger changed the whole universe your praise goes on never ending your praise goes on how sweet is that sound it's been two thousand years we're still singing your song Of the earth, let it ring out. Every tribe, every tongue, let it sing out. Glory to God in the highest. All glory to God in the highest. Your praise goes on, never ending. Your praise goes on. How sweet is that sound? It's been two thousand years, we're still singing your song. Hallelujah, your praise goes on. Your praise goes on. In our time of prayers during this Advent and Christmas season, we're going to take the opportunity to practice being fully present in the moment. As I mentioned, uh, mindfulness has deep roots in our Judeo-Christian tradition. The scriptures say to be still and know that I am God. And as we've heard, Jesus speaks often about what staying awake to the presence of God really means. Prayer is an intentional way to stay awake and alert to the presence of God among us. So we'll begin our communal prayer time with three questions. 
each one followed by a, a short silence for reflection. Focusing intentionally on, on thoughts and memories can be a kind of prayer as well, bringing our lives into a conversation with the holy. So I invite you all to, to take a deep breath and to close your eyes if you're comfortable doing that. The first question is this. Who was a gift of presence to you this week? Did you experience their attention in a way that, that felt like a special connection? Take a moment to recall this in your mind's eye, seeing it emerge like opening a gift. If you can't recall such a moment this week, that's okay. This upcoming week, you will notice these moments more deeply. The second question is this. How did you offer yourself as a gift of presence? What did it feel like to extend your attentiveness and availability beyond yourself? Did you notice how it made a difference to someone else for you to be truly present with them? The third question is this, is it possible that God's presence is felt more acutely in these moments when we truly tend to one another? What could you do this coming week that would allow God's gift of hope to flow through you to someone else? It might be as simple as finding opportunities to speak an encouraging word or as complex as actually lifting up someone's circumstances through volunteering or donating. In this prayerful, present moment, we train our attention on those who are in distress. We pray this week for our community and the wider world, especially lifting up those in need, those who are hurting, and those who hunger. We extend our prayers to places torn by war and strife, for those who are oppressed, and for all who seek hope in this Advent season. In this prayerful present moment, we train our attention on thanksgiving and joy. We give thanks this week for the countless blessings that surround us, for moments of joy amidst life's challenges, and for the loving bonds that connect us as a community. In this season of Advent, we cherish the light that guides us and the hope that of lifts our spirits. In this prayerful present moment, we ask you, Christ Jesus, the greatest gift of all, to help us savor our journey toward the celebration of Christmas. Help us recognize and create moments of sweet presence rather than filling the voids with things that don't last. Help us to stop Notice what we are experiencing and accept it with open hearts and open minds. In doing this, we allow you to meet us in the right here, right now, right where we are. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. As we move into the celebration of the sacrament of Holy Communion, Right here and right now in this place, we open our senses to see and perceive 
the gifts that we've been given through Jesus Christ. And I invite you all to, to join with me today in the celebration. We're going to have responsive words in bold up on the screen, a little more traditional uh, but still uh, interactive communion liturgy. We are all invited to Jesus' table. This is one of the ways that we acknowledge the continual gift of his presence with us. We remember the rituals of his last supper with his disciples in which he offered an enduring invitation for all of his followers to be together at meals, break bread, lift cups, and know that we are never alone. This is the invitation that we have now. The gift of presence with each other and with Jesus Christ. This is the mystical union that binds us to Christ, present in this moment, and to all who have been gathered at this table, no matter where or when. There are times when we have cut ourselves off from this gift of presence. We distance ourselves from the hope that is ours as heirs in the family of God. It seems too wonderful a gift. And yet the shepherd comes to find us, leading us gently back into safety, back into care, and back into relationship. In this moment, we take a deep breath, we feel our bodies relax into the right here and right now. And we acknowledge those regrets that are best let go. Know this. There are gifts with your name on them called grace, called forgiveness, called assurance. They are yours to accept whenever you open your arms to receive them. They are already and always there for you. You don't have to be good enough to get them. They are there because that is the nature of our loving God. God with us. Emmanuel. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks. We open our hearts. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God gift giver of all that exists. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are they who come in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. Your Spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised the gift of his presence with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. They all came together. 
He broke bread and said, Broken for you. Take, eat, remember. When you gather, know of my promise. This now is poured out. Take, drink, remember. And so, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in whole, as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's gift for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of, fruit, of bread and fruit of the vine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his, blood, by his love. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. With Jesus, the Christ, and with the Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, giving God. We know and believe that what we must do is open our hearts and that all gifts flow through. And I'd like to invite those who are helping to serve today to come forward. The table is set. Please come.
We're going to close our services during this Advent season with a Christmas carol. Now, while singing carols in Advent has been for some a little bit too soon to proclaim the birth, we sing carols in worship in this series just like we are opening presents a bit early to remind ourselves that God is already with us and always with us. Now, the carol that we're singing today has a restored third stanza, a third verse that says, Oh, hush the noise and cease the strife to hear the angels sing. May we give ourselves the time and room this season to hush, to hear, to listen, and to just be present. Please stand as you're led and able and join us in It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. Jesus Christ is that God is with us no matter what, no matter where, no matter when. There is no place you can go where God is not, 
no time of day when God is off the clock. This is the teaching of the incarnation, God with us, Emmanuel. So now, go and be truly present so that you may be the gift of presence to others. That is all that's expected, that the gift that is you is the best gift that you can give. In the name of the Holy Presence, the divine gift, and the spirit of hope that is just waiting for us to unwrap abundant life. Let's go change the world. Amen. Your praise goes on never